Hey friend, hey, welcome back to another episode here at Java with Jen. Now, I wanted to lead with a testimony that came in this week. You are catching me at the very end of a three-part series about activating angels in your life. A lot of believers don't realize that angels are there to assist us and to serve us. And the Lord has revealed in scripture ways that we can put them to work, if you will. And so one of my listeners slash friends sent me this message this week. She said, I listened to part two on Wednesday and activated my prosperity angel that day. Next day, I was slammed at work and met the goal of my incentives that seemed impossible to obtain by the end of the month. Loans have been dead all month until that day. And then she went on to tell me, that her manager had even asked her when she saw how busy things were, if she had prayed the night before. And Kira was like, yes, I did. I have. And so it's now also a testament to her coworkers about the power of God in her life. And so I just think this is such an exciting testimony to lead with, especially as we go into today's episode, which is part three with Prophet Phil um, on how to activate angels in your life, meaning how to put them to work. God made them to serve us as sons of God and to um, make our lives more impactful and effective. And both from protecting us to um, empowering us, to equipping us, to releasing things on our behalf. And so as you can hear, her angel of prosperity apparently brought a lot of business to her. And so this is the part or a side of Christianity that a lot of people sleep on because they don't realize this is possible. So in today's show, we're going to talk specifically about how to activate those angels, how to put them to work using the word of God, your spoken word, your faith, worship, all these things. And so me and Prophet Phil dive into this. There's a lot of great stories sprinkled throughout this episode as well. So share it with a friend, especially if there's an area of your life or a friend's life that really needs some breakthrough. It's possible that your prayer life is just waiting on you to cooperate and give angels a job to do on your behalf. So we're going to get all into it. If you missed the first two episodes, you're going to want to go back and listen to those because we lay a lot of great foundation as well. And those are the previous two. So let's jump into this one. It's going to be a great day. Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. On this show, I bring the simplicity of hearing God's voice into everyday life in a no-nonsense, authentic, and super practical way. With coffee in hand and real life in our faces, let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here at Java with Jen. I am excited to bring to you Dr. Phil Rich, who's a dear friend of mine for our third episode in this series on activating the ministry of angels in your life. In the first episode, we talked about the different kinds of angels that there are. Actually, no, that was the last one. The three basic ways that they minister, ministering to us, ministering for us, ministering with us, and then some unique qualities and features about angels that we see in the scripture. So that was just kind of a a really fun introduction to the angels. And then in the last episode, we talked about um, probably five or six different types of angels that there are. Um, However, Prophet Phil had 11 prepared. We just couldn't hit all of them. And so we are encouraging you to go grab his book on the ministering of angels that is in his bookstore because there's so much scripture. It's such a robust um, deep dive on the ministry of angels in your life that literally can and will change your life. And so I am continuing to encourage you guys to go check out his books on his bookstore. And in today's episode, we're going to dive into how to activate angels in your life. Because once you hear about them all, it's like, okay, how do we get this goodness going on in my reality? You know? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So Dr. Phil Rich, Prophet Phil, as I like to call him, thank you so much for being here again. Thank you. I've really been enjoying each one of these episodes and I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Good, good, good. Well, for those of you who are not familiar or you missed the other episodes, Prophet Phil is a dear friend of mine and my husband's. We met him back in 2005. And so our friendship spans almost 20 years now. 
And um, Prophet Phil has a school of the prophets, which is what I attended for years. Back then, it was like spanned over multiple years. So I think it took me six years to get through it. Um, now you can do it in a weekend with him. He's kind of crashed it all down into a more condensed version. So there are churches actually that have Phil come in and teach his school of the prophets to activate their members in the prophetic. And uh, it's it's a really unique school in that He's, he's extremely grounded in the word, grounded in theology. So he teaches you a lot of the safeguards to keep the prophetic from getting weird and woo-woo and, and unaccountable. There's a, there's a lot of safeguards that he has built into that he sees in the scripture and that just from life wisdom, he's able to offer. And that's what we really appreciate um, because, you know, we know a lot of prophetic ministers and Prophet Phil is unique in the way that he approaches the prophetic in a very safe way. Um, grounded biblical way and so that's a little history of phil but prophet phil you have a ministry ecclesia ministries over there in oklahoma correct yes we've uh i've been involved now if, if i was to go back to when, when i first started preaching i started preaching at 15 and a half hmm. and i've been preaching ever since so wow. uh i'm 65 in in january uh 21st i'll be 65 Wow. And I've been involved in ministry ever since, wow. preaching, traveling, starting churches, going on mission trips, doing a uh, school of, of the prophets, uh, uh, teachings in different places, uh, satellite schools and a whole lot of places. Wow. And so we've been involved uh, for a long time. And we also have seen God move in such healing and such miracles and uh, the fulfilling of the prophetic word. And I've learned uh, the best way to see prophecy come to pass is only say what God said. <laughs> Hear his voice, speak exactly what he said, no more, no yeah. less. Yeah. And God is the one to make it come to pass. So, yeah. I, of course, I've also learned that the prophetic is more than just what you say. There's prophetic acts. There's uh, moving and healing and miracles is also prophetic. Mm -hmm. Winning the loss to Jesus and being able to speak to them in such a way that they receive the Lord is also prophetic. So mm -hmm. I basically say this, everything God does is prophetic. Yeah. That's everything good. he does and he speaks and he moves and everything he does is prophetic. So that's why I believe in the prophetic ministry, because what is the prophetic ministry? God speaks and we hear him and his words uh, change things. And yeah. that's the prophetic. That's so good. And and one of the things that my husband and I really appreciate about Prophet Phil is he doesn't just teach from a place of head knowledge. He teaches from a place of revelation. If he gets a revelation and and practice. So if he if he's getting a revelation about how to activate angels in his life, he's going to be exercising that to get more revelation on how this impacts you. And so he demonstrates and walks in um, miracles and signs and wonders as we believers are meant to. This is yes. this is not something that's that's he's fa God's favorite child, even though he's God's favorite child. I'm his favorite child too. So, <laughs> so right. are you, you know, um, <laughs> but God's made this available to all of us and prophet Phil is hungry enough to pursue it. And, and so we just appreciate that because there's something that is forged in your nature and your character when you walk with the Lord in a way that you're pursuing those deeper places, because it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come easy. It doesn't come without a battle. doesn't come without some struggle and tears, maybe. And he's pushed through those things to obtain the fruit. And so that's where there's a depth and a richness that we see in his ministry and that we value about his ministry. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to have him on here so that I could introduce him to all y'all. And so, um, okay. So if you guys wanted some fun stories, we shared some fun stories in both of the previous episodes demonstrating yeah. angels and how they work and how they move. And we'll get more of that in this one, I'm sure. So yeah. Prophet Phil, I don't want to take up too much time. Why don't you go ahead and jump right into how to activate angels in our lives. Now, this is one of the most favorite teachings I have because I love being able to see the benefit of those angels that have been created just for us. Yeah. Just to minister to us, to us, for us, and with us, as we mm -hmm. taught in the first episode. Yeah. And so those angels are God's creation mm -hmm. and they created them to do God's bidding. And they, God created them to minister to us. They've been sent here to minister to us, for us, and with us. Mm -hmm. But how do you receive their ministry? How do you take the full benefit of that? Because a lot of people 
The angels are available to every child of God. In fact, I believe the angels are available to every human being, mm -hmm. but those who are not children of God are not going to get the full benefit of it. And uh, they don't even know that they can. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful that we can teach you how to be benefactors, how to be people who can, you know, activate those angels in their behalf and receive the full benefit of their ministry mm -hmm. that God sent them to do for us. But we, we have a part to play. And I don't think people always understand that. Yeah. They just think, case okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be in it, even if it never is. And that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. No, no. There are things we do. Yeah. You know, there are things we can believe. There's things we can speak. There's things we can do that will activate the full benefits of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to be blessed, there always is an action of faith mm -hmm. that brings the blessing in the way. So let's get into this. I want to talk to you about how to activate angels. Number one. You need to be an heir of salvation. Now, what does that mean? That means a child of God. Mm -hmm. Someone who has given your heart, your life to Jesus Christ. You've confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior and you live for him and he lives inside of you. You're his child. Mm -hmm. And so in Hebrews chapter one, verse 13 and 14, it says, but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? Ministering spirits, ministering, sent for them to minister for them who be the heirs of salvation. Mm. So we already understand that if you're an heir of salvation, then those angels are already somewhat activated toward you. Mm. In other words, they're, you can receive the benefit of it Yeah, because you're an heir of salvation. You're a child of God. So the first thing you got to make sure that you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and if you haven't invited him to invite the Lord to be the Lord of your life, yeah. just simply ask Him to come live in your heart and give your life to Him and confess Him mm -hmm. as your Lord and Savior, and His blood will wash you clean and make you a new creature in Christ Jesus, and you will become an heir of salvation. Amen. And at that point, ah, that's the first qualification. Yeah, you've already you've already bridged the first one, mm -hmm. and then. And the second one is you need a revelation of God's word. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you why in a moment. In fact, we'll, we'll go ahead and give you that scripture, Psalm 103 and verse 20. And I think we've been speaking this one, but there's something here I want to show you that maybe we haven't revealed total till this moment. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that's Psalm 103, verse 20, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of, of his word. Now, I want you to see this. They do, angels do the commandments of God, what God's word says, and they hearken to the voice. Now, this word voice, who gives voice to the word? Well, God did initially. Now we must. Now we must give voice to the word of God. And this word voice is interesting word in the Hebrew. It means the sound the frequency. Uh, when you begin, in fact, I was seeing this from an illustration that I know. Uh, they still have these radios. They're old now. <laughs> Where you plug them in, mm -hmm. you turn them on, and you tune them in to the right frequency. Because mm -hmm. even though you may have it plugged in, even though you may have it turned on, if you don't have it tuned into the right frequency, mm -hmm. you're not going to pick up the right message, True. okay? You have to find the right frequency. And like, sometimes when you're doing it, it makes all kind of sounds when you're going back and forth to try to find the right frequency mm -hmm. before you finally tune it in and then you can hear it clearly. Well, the angels are waiting for a particular frequency. Mm -hmm. Say, so what is that frequency? Well, I found it to be the revelation of God's word. When God's word is alive inside your heart, because you've been reading the word, studying the word, meditating on the word, praying the word, believing the word, the word will get inside of you, in your heart. In, in Proverbs, it's, it said, hide his word in your heart. Mm -hmm. So you hide his word in your heart. And when you do that, then you, you can speak out by faith what the word says. And when you do, the angels hear it. And they go, oh, that's the right frequency. 
Hmm. That's God talking. See, when, when you hit that frequency, is the revelation of God's word, and we sound like the Lord. It's like a walkie-talkie. Get down here, yeah. I need you. <laughs> exactly. And 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 the angels hear that, uh -huh. and and they the Bible says they hearken to it. What does wow. that mean? They swiftly go to do the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a problem, you need to find scriptures that have the answers. Mm -hmm. Read, study, meditate, pray, do the word, believe the word, and speak the word mm -hmm. as, as it is revealed to your heart mm -hmm. with the understanding. When that happens and you speak it out, angels hear it and they're activated to do it. Now, more than one time, I have had a revelation of Philippians 4.19 that came alive inside of me. But it was based on Philippians 4.18, where they gave sacrifice to the Lord. And it became a sweet smelling savor. And then Paul said, now my God shall supply all your need. Mm. According to his riches and glory, Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.18 and 19. When I got a revelation of both, and I've been sowing my seed, I've been believing God. Then... I begin to get a revelation that God is my source mm -hmm. and God is my supply. And I began to speak that out. Well, when I did, the angels heard that and it sounded like God was saying it because it had revelation in it. So they swiftly would move. And that's when I see money come in. I see doors opening. I see opportunities coming because sometimes God doesn't just drop the money on you though I've had that happen too I've had this money would just come other times I had God open the door that blessed me yeah or God connected me with someone that I was involved with them in the ministry and finances begin to come so it's not always just money when God wants to bless you he he will open doors he'll he'll favor favor it, it will bring finance mm -hmm. And so when God gives you favor, you know, it's like one day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. It happened with Joseph. Mm. He had favor with Pharaoh and he became the second in command and he was put over all the money in Egypt mm. in one day. Wow. And so we have to understand the power of that, of what God can do in our lives. And, and it's, it's based on the, the word of God in us and the word of God coming out of us, mm -hmm. the angels hearkening to it, hearing it, and then manifesting it. Mm -hmm. And it's always a revelation. In fact, hearkening to the voice of his word. Well, the word word in Hebrew is the word devar. You know, it looks like it should be pronounced devar with a B, but in Hebrew, it's pronounced with a V. So it's devar. But when you look up devar, it means the revealed word. Ah. The word that's revealed by the spirit of God. Wow. And so the angels are waiting for a revealed word to come out of our mouth. So we need to be students of the word. We need to be people who read the word, meditate on the word. Say, what is meditate? Just go over the scriptures. Just go over it. Yeah. See it in your heart as being so. Believe it. Mm. Speak it. Mutter it to yourself. <laughs> and then speak it out of your mouth because there's faith in your heart. Mm. hallelujah it's so good amen 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 and and daniel again in daniel 10 when daniel was seeking the lord for the answer to some revelation and some dreams that god had given him, he didn't have full revelation of it and he sought the lord and it wound up being like 21 days because there was a battle in the heavens sometimes mm. there's a battle in the heavens yeah it takes a little bit longer to get an answer sometimes <laughs> there's a battle in the heavens so keep <laughs> praying keep believing it'll come yeah and daniel 10 12 then said he said unto me fear not daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand mm. set your heart to get a revelation and to chasten thyself before the lord that means he went fasting and he went praying mm. he said thy words thy words were heard and I am come for thy words because you spoke. I'm here hmm. because you spoke. Is anyone seeing this? You see the power of this? Angels are activated by God's word that's in our mouth. That first of all, yeah. that's in our heart, and then it's in our mouth. Hmm. That's good. Praise God. So see, the spirit of faith is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. And it's talking about uh, believing and speaking speaking what you believe and believing what you speak. Mm -hmm. It's called the spirit of faith. Mm. 
and the angels operate when we're operating in the spirit of faith mm. and the words are so important hallelujah that's so good yes yes and then we can talk about prayer and i love this mm -hmm. prayer will also activate angels mm. in acts chapter 12 verse 5 through 10 and we talk about prayer it's really intercession here we're talking about okay and even corporate intercession as well as individual in acts 12 verse 5 through 10 peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Notice the prayer was going on intercession corporately. Mm. When Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Rise quickly. And his chains fell from his hands, and the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said to him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Notice the angel didn't do everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> angel didn't dress him. Angel didn't put his shoes on him. Yeah. <laughs> angel didn't even carry him out. Mm -hmm. But the angel did what he could not do. The angel caused the chains to fall off, mm -hmm. caused the guards to be sound asleep, yeah. caused the doors of the prison to open so he could walk out. Mm, hallelujah that's hallelujah that's, that's that partnership showing up again yeah it's working together with god with his angels and knowing how to work together you know you if, if you're working for somebody and you're a company you you don't just go in and work you find out how to work with them mm -hmm. and how to work with them effectively in a way that they can work with you yeah so it's the same way with angels. We want them to work for us, but are we working with them? Mm. Are we cooperating? See, sometimes people just don't know. And what you don't know is hurting you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. If you don't have the knowledge, you get destroyed because you didn't know how to activate angels. You didn't know how to receive a healing. You didn't know how to prosper. You didn't know how to be blessed. And things are not just going to happen like, you know, ripe cherries falling off the top of a tree or an apple falling, hitting you on the head. Yeah. No, no. And I've heard someone say for years, the best apples are at the top of the tree. And yet you got to get to the top of the tree. <laughs> and the same way, I, which some cherry trees, I learned that years ago, man, I'd be up in the tree, you know, picking cherries uh -huh. and picking fruit because some of the best was, was uh, you had to climb for. Mm. And so when we understand in life, the best blessings, you have to get involved. You have to know how to receive and how to be a part of the big blessings that God has for you. Mm. I think that's such a, such a beautiful thing. So be an, be an heir of salvation, be saved. That's the first yes. one. Yes. Um, revelation of God's word. When we open our mouth and, re and release the revelation that God has given us, which is why it's important to be in the word of God um, through prayer, which you yes. talked about. And really, I think my story at the last of last, last week's episode, when I was sharing about being out on the porch and worshiping the Lord and then asking him to release harvesting angels. That was prayer, you know, yes, worship and prayer. prayer go together, prayer. which actually your next one is praise and worship. So sorry, I stole your thunder <laughs> on that one. <laughs> no, we, 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 we'll get to it a little bit deeper. So do these all build off of each other? Are they all necessary or can they each individually activate angels? I think each one of them can help activate angels. If you get the synergy effect, which means you do all of them. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you have a great increase mm. of angelic ministry going on in your life. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes you really sense. do. And I wanted to, to make this statement, too. Um, and you had, I think you had mentioned it. I don't go around. I don't pray to angels. Mm -hmm. I don't go around having conversations with them. Yeah. Because I'm going to have my conversation with God. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him. And let me give you this verse, too. In Matthew 26 and verse 53, um, this is a situation where at the time when Jesus was about to be crucified and he was in the garden after Gethsemane, after he prayed, and uh, these guards came to take Jesus, you know, to arrest him. 
and Peter just took a, a knife, you know, and just a big sword that they had swords, believe it or mm -hmm. not. And he used this sword. He, he wasn't real good because he only got the ear, but he chopped <laughs> off the ear and, and Jesus just scooped up that ear, put it back on and healed it. And then he made this statement in Matthew 26, 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot, cannot, cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. He said, don't you realize if I really wanted to stop all this, all I had to do is ask the father and he would send 12 legions mm. of angels just because I prayed. Yeah. He didn't say, cause I had a conversation with an angel. No. Right. Now the closest thing to a conversation I've ever had is when a messenger angel came and gave me a message, mm. told me what the, the father said to me, wow. what I needed to know, give me instruction mm. for my life. But I didn't sit there and have a whole conversation and talk about the weather and the ball game. And no, because that's not their function and they simply are not going to do it. Yeah. They only do what they've been programmed by God to do, what they've been created to do. Yeah. And nothing else. They really don't have a choice. If they try to make a choice, they're going to wind up like Satan mm. getting kicked out of hell mm. because they were created to do something. If they do anything else, they're no longer going to be in the presence of God. Yeah, makes sense. So we need to know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I, I could pray the father and he'll give me up to 12 legions of angels. Now think about this. 12 legions. Well, I looked this up. A legion is 6,812 times 12. <laughs> 81,000 angels. Jeez. In the scripture, one angel in one night with one sword slew 185,000 enemy soldiers. Bruh. Just one angel. Wow. And here he said, if I really wanted to stop all this, see, Jesus was going to the cross anyway. That's why he came yeah. to pay the price for us. But notice here, J Jesus said, I could just pray. Mm -hmm. Ask the father. He would send me 12 legions of angels. Yeah. Now, Jesus, everything Jesus did, we can do except for the part that was involved in redemption. Mm -hmm. See, he went to the cross to redeem us. So what he paid for, see, we never have to pay for. Mm, yeah. If he redeemed us, if he paid for our healing, then a healing is still available. If he paid for our salvation, salvation is still available. He, the word of God also said he paid to get us free from poverty as well. Mm, yeah. That's in the scripture. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. Uh, he took the poverty on himself in, in order to give us the riches. And so when you understand anything he paid for, it's ours. Mm. Now, if Jesus could pray and 12 legions of angels could be dispatched, friends, so can we. Come on. So wow. can we. That'll make you look at your life challenges differently, won't it? Oh, man. I, I, I don't think we know what a treasure we are to God. Yeah. Now, we kind of have a little idea what a treasure he is to us. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. And we're learning more and more what a treasure he is to us. Yeah, yeah. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Mm. But we don't understand what a treasure we are to God. Let me tell you why. What you're able to trade for something determines what something is worth to you. Mm. That's true. The father was willing to give his very son for us. Mm. Which means he loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. And that's what Jesus said in John 17 mm. in that prayer. You, you can read it from about 20, 21, 22, 23, right in there. Yeah. Of the 17th chapter of John. And Jesus said that the world may know that you, you love your people the way you love me. Mm. It's the same. It's the same. Wow. You got to know that. Yeah. The father loves you as much as he loves Jesus. Wow. And it's just, it's revelatory, but it is the truth. Yeah. And Jesus said the same thing. Mm. Said the same thing. Praise God. Wow. Aren't That's you so glad good. you're loved? Yes, yeah, <laughs> so good.
Many of you have been so sweetly asking how you can help promote and support the podcast. And so I've thought about it and there are a couple ways that are super easy and super efficient. Firstly, sharing any posts that I make about an episode, rating and reviewing on social media and iTunes is huge. This is so simple and yet it really helps get the word out to more people and it actually helps me come up higher in iTunes search results so then people are able to find the podcast more easily. Secondly, you can financially support monthly through the Anchor app, which is where I'm hosted, or on Patreon. Just go to the Anchor app and hit support, or you can give through Patreon as a monthly member. Just visit patreon.com slash Java with Jen. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Java with Jen and sign up to be a monthly member at whichever amount that you prefer. Your donations help me to invest into new equipment, helps me send thank you gifts to interviewees, because I love to do that, and affords me the ability to continue to put my time back into my podcast so I can keep giving back to you. Now, some of you have already been doing this, and I am so grateful. Thank you so much, because when y'all do this, it encourages me so very much. So that again was share, rate, review on social media and iTunes, or give financially through Anchor, or Patreon. Okay, with all that said, thanks for listening and let's get back to the show. And the fourth thing that really activates angels is the praise and worship. In Psalms 34, 7, it says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Keep this mm-hmm. word fear in, in your mind. And delivereth them. Now, when I looked up the word fear in the Hebrew, the pronunciation is Y A R E, Y A R E. It means honor, respect, awe, and worship. Mm. It means worship. So to truly fear Him, you are in awe of Him yeah. and you are worshipful of His greatness. Mm. And those that do, He, the angel of the Lord, will encamp around about you mm. to deliver you whatever you're going through wow it's available and that's the point yeah these angels are available yeah angels on assignment (laughs) and they're available but we need to know how to activate their ministry so we get the full benefit at all times so live your life worshiping and praising god at all times in in this book of psalms it says david he said i will praise the lord seven times a day Amen. You know what that's really saying? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. I have a praise in my heart, a praise on my lips as I go about my day. Yeah. And I am thankful to a mighty, glorious, wonderful God. I'm thankful. And one, one practical way for those who are listening, one practical way that I have found helps to cultivate like a spirit of praise and worship in my heart is looking for things to be grateful for like like I've I've caught myself in the past you know like when money's tight and I go grocery shopping and inevitably I have to put a few things back because I gotta stick to the budget you know and and I found myself for a while being disgruntled about it as if the Lord wasn't providing and then I realized I was like Janelle you still have a car full of groceries like so what you have to put two things back you still have a car full of groceries there's people starving in the world you know and so I shifted in my thinking and I said Lord I am gonna thank you every time that you the righteous I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging for bread like we will never beg for bread we will never go without and so I started changing my attitude and then I noticed as I started doing that it, it assuaged all fear that would try to creep up over any kind of lack that we felt, which right. also engaged breakthrough, you know, like yes. the, when I focus on gratitude and praise and worship, and maybe that's why it brings a breakthrough because maybe that gratitude is activating angels on my behalf, you know, I and do believe that I believe that's a part of this, the fearing him. Okay. Is that, and also I've learned this, the best way to lose the blessing of God mm. is ingratitude. Mm. The best way to acquire the full blessings of God. Thank God for what you do have. Yeah. You know, the children of Israel out in the wilderness, the reason they messed up so bad is because they they weren't grateful for what God had done. They were always looking at what hadn't happened yet. Yeah. 
And when we look at what hasn't happened yet, we cease to thank God for what has. Mm. Are we still breathing? Are, are we? Is, check your heart. If it's still beating, oh, praise God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Mm. You know, if you were able to eat today, praise the Lord. If you had a bed to sleep in, praise God. Yeah. And if you didn't, and all you had was a pillow, thank God you had a pillow. Yeah. And I find that when you can have that attitude, and this is what the Lord said, whatever you can thank me for, I will always give you more. Mm. But we have to thank him for whatever we have. Yeah. In everything. Mm. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for where you're at. Thank God for what you do have. Thank God for his blessings. If he saved you, praise him. Yeah. If you're able to breathe, praise him. Mm. Praise him that you're still alive. Yeah. Some so people are not. That's true. So we have a whole lot to thank the Lord for and to yeah. praise him for and to worship him for. Yeah. And, and it's extremely important that we understand that. It's extremely important that we mm. receive from God. Yeah. And so we praise him. And I've seen God provide for me supernaturally through the praises. Mm -hmm. I believe I've activated angels many times. Uh, the time my kidneys were bothering me so much. I think uh, it was, oh my goodness, I, probably 40 years ago now, mm -hmm. I had some form of kidney disease and my kidneys hurt me so bad. I, if I turned over in the bed, man, I was, mm -hmm. I had to get up out of bed because the pain was just like, knives jabbing me in my kidneys if i turned a certain way if i breathed a certain way i mean i was in bad shape and uh i'd been prayed for i had hands laid on i laid hands on myself i quoted scripture and i noticed that i asked the holy spirit because i know he knows everything i said holy spirit you know what i need to do to receive this what do i need to do and he gave me Mark eleven twenty four. What sort of things you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. Mm. Then you shall have them. Now, I I didn't fully understand that verse, even though I preached it and quoted it. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, when will you know for sure that you're healed in your kidneys? And I said, when they no longer hurt. He said, mm -hmm. wrong. Read the verse again. So I went over and over the verse and I was missing it every time. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, this time. Read till I tell you to stop. So I said, what's everything you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. He said, stop. He said, what are you supposed to be believing? That I receive. Believe that I'm a receiver, that I'm. I'm. He said, yeah, you got, you, you got to believe you've got it before you get it. Then you'll have it. Hmm. And then he said this to me, if someone gave something to you that you always wanted, what would you say to them? I said, thank you. He <laughs> said, you're welcome. I went, oh, now I get it. I'm supposed to praise God that it's already done before it's done. Yeah. And it will be done. Yeah. So I lifted my hands and I began to thank God for my kidneys being healed. Man, I was praising. I was thanking. I was just giving him praise for healing my kidneys. And probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes of that. I felt like warm honey being poured on the back of my neck. It went down my shoulders. It went down from my middle of my back. When it got to the kidneys, there was no more pain. Yeah. Wow. It has been 40 years. Wow. And I believe I activated angels that day. Hmm. The angels of healing, the angels awesome. of miracles. That's awesome. And it, it's right now when you when you're sharing this when we're recording, it's Christmas time. And so I'm like, I, I've I'm not gonna lie, I've always struggled a little bit in, per lack of rec revelation over that whole believe you've received it. I'm like, my brain gets stuck. Like, but I don't know I about how to do that, you know. And I would get I would get so <laughs> stuck. But I can think of right now, like I have a Christmas gift downstairs under the tree. I sent my husband the link. I said, babe, this is the one and only thing I want for Christmas. Please buy it for me. And it's a, uh, it's an air fryer. It's like a 14 to one air fryer. It's like, tell me you're a mom without telling me you're a mom when you ask for appliances for Christmas anyways. And so it's down yeah. there in the box. I saw it wrapped in his office and I went over there and I hugged the box and I said, babe, thank you for my air fryer. And he goes, that's not your air fryer. That's for Levi. And I was like, 
I don't believe you. It's my air fryer. And then he puts it under the tree. And so Shiloh is asking about it. And and Stephen goes, that's a gift for the whole family. Everyone's gonna gonna get that gift. And I said, see, I told you it was my air fryer. And so I'm telling my husband, thank you for my air fryer, even though I haven't opened it and I don't get the benefits of it yet. But I'm looking at it and I know what it is and I can't wait to open it. And then Christmas day, I'll get to open it and then we'll make all the food. And so I feel like that's kind of the same concept is that in my heart, I know it's coming. You know, I just haven't unwrapped it yet. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's, that's how all the blessings of God are. They're laid up for us in the heavenly realm. Yeah. They're already packaged up. They're already ours. They have our name on it. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to thank God for it, even though we haven't yet opened the gift, mm -hmm. when we thank God for it, it gets delivered to us so yes. that we can open it up and we can get the benefit of it. So and so, and we activate the angels. Angels are very much activated by praise and worship. And I noticed this is interesting. When I looked up the word praise, one of the meanings of praise is thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's the actual meaning of praise. So we've not really praised till we are thanking him mm -hmm. and we're grateful for everything he's done and everything we know he's going to do because he's already laid it up for us. Yeah. You know, in Ephesians 1 and 3, man, he's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything is already ours, mm -hmm. right? Everything is already ours. It's in the heavenly realm. It's in Christ Jesus, and it's ours. And as we praise and thank God for it, we'll see it manifest. That's so good. That's so good. So hit this last one. This one, I think a lot of people may not associate this last yeah. one with activating angels. No, I don't think they fully understand, but yet it's in scripture. Mm-hmm. In Acts chapter 10, verse 1 through 3, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. It means he was dedicated to God, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. Now notice, don't, don't get hung up on the alms part. I do give to the poor, but that's not my main giving. Uh-huh. My main giving as a covenant child of God is I give tithes and offerings. I give tithes to to my local church and I give offerings to different ministries. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm always giving. And I also give alms. I give to the poor. I help, I help, uh, you know, feed the hungry and all of those things. I'm involved in all of that. That's part of it. Okay. But my main giving is what I call my covenant giving. And here Cornelius was not allowed to do the covenant giving mm. because he, he was a, he, he was an Italian and he wasn't a Jew and only the Jews at that time were allowed to go into the synagogue and give tithes and offers. Mm. No one else could. So he was like, you're not holding me down. <laughs> and if you don't receive it there, I'll give it to the poor. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give anyway. But the Bible says he gave much and he prayed to God always. Okay. Then he saw in a vision evidently about the night now of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, now, it's interesting what took place because the angel goes on in the 10th chapter. And he said, because of your prayers and because of your giving, I have come. Mm -hmm. You can read that in the 10th chapter of Acts. He said this memorial, he called it a memorial prayer. A prayer with giving. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've come because of this memorial prayer that you have given and you have prayed and people don't understand mm -hmm. angels are attracted to generosity. Yeah. That makes sense. You know why? Because who's more generous than God himself. Mm -hmm. They're used to the generosity of God. Yeah. And when you and I become generous, we take on the heart and the nature of God. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you, if you love much, you give much, you love a little, you give a little. Yeah. Well, that's going to really check people's hearts. But I love God so much. I want to bless other people. Mm -hmm. I, I think my, if for a giver and I'm a giver and, and generally, you know, you and your husband are big givers, some of the biggest. And when you become a giver in your heart, because God has given so much to us, we become givers. And yeah. it's such a great joy mm. to give and bless other people and bless the ministry and bless the church and bless other ministries. And, and then yes, give to the poor and help those that are in need. 
Yeah. It becomes such a blessing to do it that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Yes. It really is. I yeah. I don't even know. Unless you're a giver, you'd never understand that. Mm -hmm. But true. when you're a big giver, you never really are giving anything away. Mm -hmm. You're investing in the kingdom. Yeah. And there's always a return. Yeah. God will, oh, you can't outgive God. He'll outgive you every time. That's so true. No matter what you do. And I'm telling you, angels are very much, I want to say it again, they're very much attracted to generous people. Mm. They will move. And here this angel said, I've come because of your giving and because of your prayers. Mm. So the angel was activated. That's so good. I give you my prayer. You Isn't know, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, the longer I've been in business, actually, it's amazing how many spiritual principles I've learned by getting in business. Yes. And, and I've noticed that it's, I don't know if I can call it a trend or, or what it is, but inevitably every business coach I've worked with, every millionaire I've studied, they all talk about how one of the most important things that all millionaires and billionaires understand is mindset and gratitude. And they always, they always talk about the importance of gratitude and, and speaking uh, increase over your life. And, and what I'm realizing is they're operating on these spiritual principles, whether they realize their spiritual principles or not, but they've all come to see it. They all see it works. They all see the principles are there. And so they're like, for however it were, they all say the universe brings it to me, you know, or whatever, but they don't realize they're tapping into the principles God has set in motion. And quite likely these millionaires are activating angels on their own behalf and they don't even realize it, you know? Right. And, and it's because of, and I remember when we flooded, um, I've shared this on my show before, but I remember when we flooded with Harvey and we had lost everything, right? 10 feet of water in the house, lost everything. We just built it and, and had no idea it was going to be so bad. So we didn't take things with us like we could or should have. And, um, and I remember for a while, it was like all these people were showing up and just in gangbusters to help us. And then I remember there was a season of time when it got real quiet. And, um, and so after about a week and a half of not seeing a lot of like miracles on our behalf, I remember I started to go into complaining and not complaining, but like anxiety, like, God, I don't know what we're going to do. We need this and we need that and, blah, blah, and kind of stress. And I stopped myself and I was like, you know what, Lord, it's been a minute since I've told you, thank you for what you have done. And so yeah. I stopped and I just started telling him, thank you for paying off the kids schooling. Thank you for the lunches that people provided. Thank you for the house you provided that we don't have to pay for to live in. Thank you for the Mennonites that are putting floors in our house for free. Thank you for this. And I started <laughs> saying all these things. And then when I got yeah. to the end of my prayer, I said, I said, Lord, I didn't have a whole lot to pray for anymore. At that point, I had expressed all my gratitude. And so I was built up in my spirit. And I just said, Lord, what I would ask for is I said, a lot of families in our church suffered alongside of us. So I asked that you would bring finances to every one of those families. And I said, and I don't mean little finances. I need, I mean, something that'll move the needle for these people, like yeah. bring them some big finances. Less than 24 hours later, we got a call from Good Morning America at the church and they said, hey, we heard that your church has been really helping people in the area. So anyone in your home, in your church that has flooded, we want to give them a $2,000 gift card. And we're doing a pop-up with Home Depot. And if they can make it to the pop-up, they can leave with anything they can fit in their car. And so I was like, what the stop? <laughs> I was like, that was so effective. And so I, it was such a pivot point for me that like, I saw no results from the prayers when I was in stress and anxiety, nothing. My words didn't align with the word of God. They didn't align with faith. They didn't align with gratitude. They aligned with, with lack and the perception that the enemy would have tried to create for me. And, and when I aligned with Thanksgiving, I saw miracles and breakthroughs every single time. And so that's how we lived that season and even now looking back, it's a, it's a marker in our life of, of sweet memories because of how the Lord showed up when we had lost everything. And the boys said it was their favorite time of the year, even though they lost everything that they owned. And so that's just the beauty of, of showing up with gratitude and Thanksgiving and, and how the Lord moves on response to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of these things. And you think about it, if you have received anything from God, God used angels to deliver it. Hmm. Because that's God's delivery system. Hmm. 
And so there were angels. Uh, angels are involved in everything God does. Wow. Because God uses them to deliver it to us. Wow. That's so good. Isn't that beautiful? That's so good. With um with the giving, and, and I kind of want to ask you about this earlier, but I didn't know when was a good time to ask. So, and it's kind of two things kind of connected. So maybe you can help me understand in heaven, it taught or in the word of God, it talks about the storehouses in heaven and that that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And so there's this um persuasion in my heart that there are storehouses in heaven that have mm-hmm. what I need, and I just need to go get it from there. So I've I've been many times in prayer, gone and and asked the Lord to take me to the storehouses so I could pick some things out and I've had these visions encounters where I walk and there's, there's an angel, like a check-in angel standing there at the door. And he's got like a list of like people who are approved to go in there. And, um, and I noticed that on his list, my name was on the list and next to it, it said always approved. Like, I don't have to, I don't have to get special permission. I'm always approved to go in there. And, um, so I go in there and ask, you know, be like, Lord, I need this or I need that. And so I shared this with a friend of mine and she's a big giver. Like she's a big believer in, in the power of sowing seed. And, um, and so she, they were in a spot where they were struggling financially. And so I told her about this place in prayer that I like to go sometimes. And, um, and I said, you know what? I said, you just need to go in the storehouses and, and you need to place a demand on the seed that you have sown and ask the Lord to, to pull from his storehouses and release the blessing to you. And so she was like, yes, girl, I'm gonna do this right now. And so she went into prayer and, uh, and she asked the Lord, she had recently sown a seed to someone. And, and so she pulled on it and she she called me freaking out. She goes, Jen, an hour later after I prayed that, she said, my mom called me and said that I got a check in the mail from our mineral rights and that it was a check for like $1,800. And she was like, they're always like 25 bucks. They're never that big. And so she was freaking out because she had just done what I had suggested, which was go to the storehouse and ask the Lord to release. So help me understand even that, which I know it's a little off topic, but I feel like it connects if the angels are are bringing things to us, you know? Right. Well, your connection, and and I don't think we understand this. Everything in the natural came from everything in the spirit realm, from God who is spirit. Mm -hmm. And so every good thing, every good and perfect gift comes from him. Uh And he's laid everything up in store for us. Now, when we understand that, we understand the angels are the one that's going to be bringing it to us. Do we have access? Oh, yeah. There's a scripture that says this. It's in Hebrews chapter 4 and in verse 16. It says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm. Now, that means if it says we can, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Last time I checked about where the throne of God is, it's actually in heaven. Mm. <laughs> yes. But see, our spirit man has access Mm. because we are children of God. In in John chapter 3 and verse 13, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and to his disciples. No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that first came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Mm. Now, he just said, while he's standing on the earth, he said, I'm in heaven. Mm. Son of Man which is in heaven. That's, come on, that's. That's John chapter three, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It's telling me that our natural body makes us a citizen of the earth. Our spirit that's born again makes us a citizen of heaven. And we have a right to go into the heavenly. And because we do, there there are things in the heavenly realm Mm. that we have access to. Yeah. And our spirit man can go there even though our flesh is on the earth because mm-hmm. we're citizens of both realms. Yeah. And if you try to figure that out with your natural brain, uh, you're going to wear yourself out. <laughs> it's going to be really hard. Don't try to listen. Don't try to figure out spiritual matters with your natural mind. Yeah. You need the mind of Christ. You need a spiritual mind and your spirit man does have a mind and it's called the mind of Christ. Your natural man has a natural mind to work in the natural. But you're not, see, according to scripture, and I found this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, it says there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Hmm. So we're both natural and spiritual. Yeah. 
Therefore, our spirit man is not limited. Mm -hmm. God has caught me up in the spirit, taken me into places. I've been, I've been in heaven. I've been in different places in heaven. I've been in the library in heaven. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the books in heaven and experienced the most amazing things. I've been in the bakery in heaven of all places. Ooh. Do those carbs not count? No, not at all. <laughs> it's the bread of life. Amen. <laughs> Don't get fat on it. You just get strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting. When I first experienced that, a pastor went there with me and he, because he, he began to talk about, do you smell the bread? brother?" I said, yeah, we're in the bakery of heaven. Is that where we're at? I said, yeah. Wow. And we could even taste the bread, wow. not with our na natural tongue, but with, mm -hmm. you know, with our spirit man could taste it. Yeah. And we saw the bread and the angels were baking these big, beautiful loaves of bread. Oh, man, pull them out of these keels, these big ovens. Mm. And you could just smell the smell of the fresh baked bread. Mm. And when I got close enough, just looking at it, I was able to taste it. Mm. Beautiful, just wonderful bread. And boy, it just it feeds you spiritually. Mm. It's wonderful. So there's there's things that's available to us that goes way beyond the natural. And angels are beyond the natural. Yeah. They're spiritual. Yeah. But we forget that we're also spiritual. Mm. So true. And I think, I think for anybody who's struggling with like what we're describing about like going to heavenly places and all of this and having experiences in your spirit where you can taste things and see things, hear things, but it's like, but, but how is that happening? It's kind of like when you dream and you're in a dream and you're like, it was so real. I could see everything. I could like, it almost feels like I was a, awake having a real experience, you know, in this dream, I could taste what I was eating and I could smell the flowers, you know, and you've had these real life experiences in a dream and, and it's so real. And that's how it is in the spirit, because essentially that's where you go is in your imagination, your spirit, man, the way you see and access all of that is through your imagination I don't know how else you want to describe that really, but, but it's through your imagination is how you see and touch and taste and experience those things. So for me, I feel like experiencing, it's like a dream. It's like when you're in a dream only it's actually happening. Yeah. And, and when people say, well, that's just your imagination. No, it's way more than that. Mm -hmm. Your imagination actually doesn't come from your mind. I've been studying this about the, the mind of Christ versus mm -hmm. the natural mind. Um, the, your imagination is not from the natural mind. Your imagination is from the spirit mind. It's from your spiritual mind. And I wrote, you know, I wrote a book about the inner mind. Mm. And I and uh, I get into all of these different concepts about your, your spiritual mind, the mind of Christ in you. And it's your spiritual mind, not just a natural mind. Wow. And your spiritual mind is where your imagination comes from. And, mm. and that's and, and, and some people talk about subconscious. Well, your natural mind doesn't have a subconscious. Mm. The subconscious is talking about your, your spiritual mind. Mm. That, that's your subconscious. And so yeah. when you understand these concepts, you'll understand that we have been so limited mm. because of our lack of understanding of these things that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In other words, what you don't understand you don't get the benefit of. Yeah, that's true. And yet that understanding cannot be just with your head. It's got to be with your heart. Mm. The same way that you believe God. Yeah. The same way that you get saved. It's not about your head. Yeah. It's all about your heart. That's so good. And for those of you who are listening and you're like, oh, I'm still tripping out a little bit. How do you, how do you know that you don't, you're not just getting off into weird woo woo land, you know, when you have these experiences and that's what I've taught you guys many, many times. And what Phil taught me is that it must always align with the word of God. And, and there's so many places in scripture where it describes what things in heaven look like, what, you know, like I remember one time my, my son, when he was like six years old, I, I was like, Hey buddy, let's go to heaven. And he was like, okay. And so I, I lay down in the bed with him and we put on some soaking music and I just kind of walked him through some little exercises to, in his imagination, go to heaven. And so as he got there, I just started asking him questions like, well, what do you see? Ask the Lord a question. And, and as he was describing to me what he was seeing, I think I still have the recording on my phone somewhere. Um, as he was describing what he was seeing, I mean, he's six, so it's not like he's read these scriptures, you know? He was right. describing things that I knew were in scripture, but he had right. no reason to have knowledge of it. And so that's what confirmed to me, okay, he's actually having a spiritual experience 
with the, in a true spiritual destination, which was heaven. And, and I knew that because it was also in the word of God and he had no way of knowing that. So if you guys were like, Hey, I, I want to try this, but I don't want to get off into weird territory. Right, right. The way you check it is against the word of God. Yeah. You stay with God's word and that's how you know it's real. That's how you know it's, it's, it's of God mm -hmm. because it's based on the word of God and it's in line with the word of God. And also what comes out of it afterwards? Mm -hmm. What's the fruit of it? Is the fruit that you want to serve God more? Is the fruit that you want to help other people more? Is the fruit mm -hmm. that you love God more than you ever loved him? Now, if the fruit is that you get built up in your head and you get full of pride and you get arrogant and you get flaky and no, no, that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. That which is of God will humble you. That's true. It will cause you to love God more than ever. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it is of the Lord. That's really good. And, and you want to connect with the right people who will always take you to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have the kind of friends that say, okay, I heard you had this experience. Now, where's that in the word of God? Uh -huh. and, and Brother Hagin used to do something real amazing. When he would have angelic visitations, he would say to the angels, okay, give me three scriptures in context about everything you say. Yep. And the angels would do it. In fact, Jesus appeared to him one time and he said, Lord, if this is really you, give me three scriptures in line with everything you're saying. Yeah. And the Lord didn't get upset. The Lord said, oh, of course I will. And the Lord just started giving him all these scriptures. And he said, oh, it really is you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I love it. That's so good. That's so good. Well, Phil, I know that you have such an abundance of knowledge on these topics and i mean goodness for your dissertation to be hundreds and hundreds of pages good lord and that was years ago that you wrote that so what would you um where would you direct everybody if they wanted to get more of your resources and and maybe mention a few of your other books aside from the angel ones maybe some of yes. your more popular ones that people really like yes i i have one called supernatural prayer mm. which really teaches you about being baptized in the holy spirit and receiving a prayer language and it's very in-depth. It'll teach you, show you that it is scripture, and it'll show you how to yield to it and what it's for mm. and how to use that gift uh, for the benefit that God really instilled that gift for you, for you to have. Yeah. There's benefits connected to everything God gives. And uh, we have other, a Kingdom Authority. That's a powerful book. You definitely want to get a hold of that one. How to Be Used by God. Mm. That's a book that God gave me after praying in tongues, uh, about eight to 10 hours a night for 10 months. Wow. I received both two, two of the books. I received a supernatural prayer and how to be used by God. God gave those books to me, the outlines, the scriptures, the context, everything. Wow. Uh, when I would pray all those hours every night mm -hmm. and uh, they went on for about 10 months. Wow. And so you, you can get on, you can get on Amazon if you want to do that. It's mm -hmm. Amazon. Uh, dot com and look up Christian books under Philip Rich with two L's and also under Dr. Philip Rich because I have books that's labeled both ways before I got the doctorate and after I got the doctorate. And so you can look them both that way or you can get on on my uh, website, drphilrich.com, all lowercase d-r-p-h-i-l-r-i-c-h.com. Nice. And so you can go that way and as soon as you pull it up, just, you know, click on the button on the right. There's three little, there's, there's like three little dots up in the corner. I always wondered what those were until I clicked on them. And when <laughs> I clicked on it, you know, it pulled up a bunch of stuff that you can look at, including uh, my bookstore. And nice. you can order it through there. And it'll eventually, well, it, as soon as you click on that and it pulls up the bookstore and you find some of my books there, click on one of those books and it'll take you right to uh, Amazon directly. And you can order it and you'll get it in a couple of days awesome. and uh, it'll be a great, great blessing to you. Any of those books. And we also have our dissertation. That's our on prophetic ministry today, 420 pages each. Wow. So it's about 840 altogether. And those are running on Amazon, uh, a little over a hundred dollars, $101 a piece. Wow. They're, they are thick and it's all the scriptures, all the teaching. In fact, that is actually used in, uh, in one of the colleges that I'm connected with, Midwest College of Theology, uh, that's actually uh, used for the for uh, the prophetic. You can get a degree all the way up to doctorate degree. 
wow. at Midwest College of Theology using our materials. That's amazing. Well, a hundred dollars is a lot cheaper than going to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because to get the doc just for the doctorate only, it is probably going to be thirty five hundred. Wow. And so, yeah, you can get that. And see, when I when I went through, I had to pay. There was only one time I didn't have to pay because God spoke to a man to pay for my master's program. Wow. And I think it was twenty five hundred. My doctorate was about thirty five hundred. Wow. And wow. Uh, one of the two doctorates. So it, it, it's, it's you know, it costs to go to college. Yeah. And our materials are college level. And so you're getting it pretty cheap. And all the outlines are there. I mean, you can teach out of it. It's wow. that in depth. That's you can awesome. teach out of it. Some churches are teaching out of it. And some churches are doing their own school, the prophets, and using our materials. And if they clear it with me, I, of course, I'll let them do it. That's Just let awesome. me know. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's so good. So you guys go check out um, Dr. Phil Rich or Philip or Dr. Philip Rich or Philip Rich on Amazon. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's the full, yeah. full first name or it's yeah. drphilrich.com. If you want to go to his website, it's probably a little yeah. easier to just head over to the website. So you don't, I know I've looked your stuff up on Amazon before and there's another author with a very similar name. And so it pulls up all his stuff too. So maybe just go to Phil's website. It'll be easier. Um, yeah. But Make sure and connect with Prophet Phil if you're if you're interested. If you have a church and you've been wanting to develop people, your leaders in your church, um, your your ministry teams, whatever in the prophetic, you could connect with him about his school of ministry as well. It's um it's just very robust, it's very thorough, very effective, and it's just such a blessing to get in partnership with Prophet Phil. He's been a blessing in our lives for almost 20 years now. And and you know, if he wasn't a solid man, we probably wouldn't be able to say it'd been 20 years. So <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so you guys, thanks so much for listening. Share this message or share this episode with a friend. Make sure you're subscribed to Java with Jen wherever you listen. And also if you guys leave a five-star rating or a review wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts is the easiest. That actually helps boost the algorithm so that my episodes will end up in front of more people when they're searching the platforms and stuff. So make sure you go do that as well. Just help get the word in front of more people, post it on social media, you know, all the things. And, um, but make sure you come connect with me over on Instagram. That's where I like to hang out the most. It's a great place to message each other and interact with, with stuff that I post on there. Sometimes I'll ask you guys for topic ideas and questions and stuff. So you guys help me shape my content. So come hang out over on Instagram at Java with Jen. Connect with Prophet Phil at his website, drphilrich.com, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say hey. It's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Also, don't miss our merch store where you can get super cool Java with Jen swag and coffee. Find it at javawithjenmerch.com. Until next time, remember, hearing God's voice is simple and he wants to be a part of your everyday life. See you next week.